What's going on everybody? Dustin back with Hook and Needle. Thank you for tuning in. I had a tournament not that long ago. It was the first club event of the season and it didn't really go as I planned. Every day was pretty cold. Uh, the morning started out in the low to mid 30s and warmed up a little bit throughout the day. Fishing wasn't as great as I thought it would be, but as I was going through the footage, it gave me a chance and an opportunity to talk about a lure that really impressed me. I got it the day before. I had a tackle warehouse package on the front porch the day before. I opened it up, I put this lure in my box, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. It ran great, and I caught a lot of fish on it. Everybody knows late winter is a great time to throw a jerkbait offshore. This jerkbait I picked up is the Shimano World Minnow. And as you can see, inside has a little flint, a little filament, I don't know what you call it, but it's a little piece of metal that keeps on ticking even while the bait's suspending. You can maybe see this bait got pretty chewed up over the course of that weekend. The color I chose when I ordered it was the pro blue color. There was a lot of things to like about this bait. I like the action and I like the inaction. The suspending was great. It doesn't have a sound to it. You can barely hear the little flick of the flint or filament that's in it and a little bit of sound from the hooks hanging. But some other things that I really liked about this bait was the profile, the shape, the weight shift, everything about that is really great. Uh, the size of the bill was a perfect size for the mid to deeper depths that I was fishing, uh, 10 to 20 feet. Check out some of the footage from that day real quick and then I'm gonna talk about what I was doing to create the action that was working and I'll also talk about the line, rod, and reel setup that I use with this lure. with it. If we were counting 14s, I'd be doing pretty good right now. There we go. Kept running towards me, I couldn't get on him. Got him. That's where they be. Bye.
There we go. Come here, little boy. Pretty fish. Beautiful colors. There we go. Might make it. Might. Gonna be close. Nope. Yeah, she was so this basically went on through the entire day. I stayed on the same pattern, kept throwing the same thing, hoping to come across a little bit bigger patch of bigger bass. And I just kept ending up on the 14 inch and smaller side, unfortunately. Uh, I caught some 14s, caught some unders, and caught some bass. Nothing over 15, so nothing to put in the bag. But any one of those could have been the one. But the way I was running this bait is I would throw it out past the shad balls across the cove. I would reel it in about six or seven times, real hard, real fast. Get it down deep, and then I would pop, 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 pop. Let it sit for a second. And I kept using that motion, kept bringing it in, reeling the slack, let it sit. Most of the time, I'd hit it a couple times, let it sit, hit it a couple times, and boom, they'd be right on it, right when I hit it again. What really helped keep them pinned and bring them in was a setup that I used. I have a St. Croix Bass X 6'8 medium extra fast tip. It's perfect, it's got the perfect bend, it's got the perfect weight ratio to keep them on those treble hooks. Really the entire day, I think two came off of all the ones that I caught. So that's a really good landing and hookup ratio. Obviously you want it to be zero, but when you're using a jerk bait, a lot of times with these small trebles, if they just get the back of a piece of one or they just slap at it, there's a pretty good chance that they're gonna come off. Also, the reel I was using. I don't think it really had as much to do with it, but I was using this SLX DC 70. Now, a 150 will work. The 150 is the one that they sell in the US. I ordered this 7.2 gear ratio SLX DC 70 size from overseas. It's the only place to get it and that's what I wanted for this setup. Something smaller, more compact and lighter, especially when I'm using this for anything like jerk baits or walking baits. It can get a little exhausting throughout the day. So the lighter my setup, the better it is. Also the line makes a big difference. The line I was using was 12 pound Berkley Fluoro Shield. It's a copolymer. It's got a little bit more stretch than a fluorocarbon would but less than monofilament. It's kind of a meet me in the middle type deal. The 12 pound was perfect for this. It held up great. The knot strength held up great. Cast really good. I mean I cast this thing from one side of the cove all the way over to the docks on the other side of the cove. So that's the way it goes. Not every tournament ends up the way that you want it to but i was happy to be out there fishing and i was happy to kick off the season with the club i just wanted to break down the lure the setup and the technique that i used that day it was very consistent it brought a lot of fish in the boat and hopefully it'll help somebody and uh, get out there and give it a shot. I got some really awesome stuff coming up here soon. Some good tournament footage, some pre-fishing footage, some lure painting. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.